basically now what a vision does is when you have vision and you believe your vision enough, it gives you a sense of purpose. And that sense of purpose is the thing that gives you the power. that your life was heading in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's almost like if you buy into it enough, you can't deny it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like if you jump higher than everyone else and you can shoot free throws all day long and you're just amazing on the court, better than everyone else and everyone's telling you you're going to be a successful ball player one day. If you truly believe in it, that's what ends up happening, right? It's just a matter of the only way you're going to fail at it is because you refuse it, right? But if you embrace what you're good at and you embrace your dream and your passion, it becomes a reality. Like you have to let it happen, right? And that whole thing about sense of purpose is we're all capable of that. But unfortunately, a large number of us turn our back on that purpose, So we, so we struggle to get up in the morning. We struggle to uh, read, learn, grow, um, train, right? Do whatever it is that we need to do in order to turn that dream into a reality, in order to go down that order of dream, vision, goal, reality. And so many of us all... Um, have no idea that that's how it goes. And it's not what you're taught in school. You're taught what an igneous rock is. You're taught algebra. But you're never taught to understand your own psychology. There's no personal development class in school. You're taught to follow directions and be a good employee. And that's ultimately what the machine creates. It creates more parts. It's, it's designed to create more screws, more bolts more cogs, these interchangeable parts that when they break down, you swap them out, throw them in the trash and replace them. And so subconsciously, when we're caught in this machine, we know that. And we know that we're expendable, which is why we're afraid to leave our jobs. We're afraid to take risks because we think that we'll be doomed without the machine. We're a slave to the machine because we don't feel or recognize our own importance. That the machine cannot be sustained without us being slaves to it. But it's not the machine that gives us purpose. We give the machine purpose. The machine doesn't exist without us, so it needs us. But psychologically, we don't understand our values, so we think that we need the machine that we created and which enslaves ourselves. <laughs> well, bring down the machine, not necessarily bring down the machine, but can repurpose. You the nature of it? Yes, you can. Right? It's kind of like we all use clocks, but for different purposes. Right? But the machine is a very loosely identified thing. Right? It doesn't really serve any real specific purpose. It's just a construct that we're used to following. It's just this thing that we're used to using. Right? And it's imperfect and it's breaking down and the way we're using it cannot be sustained. And this is why you have so much poverty. Because the focus has been on sustaining the machine rather than the people figuring out how to sustain themselves. So then is the machine needed at all? Then? No. The people are needed. People with purpose. People who know how to grow crops. 
people who know that they're not slaves to mutilating animals and, and, and sucking the milk out of cows and destroying the land and spilling oil into the ocean, right? And, and that's just simply when you take your mind off the machine and you go through your personal development, you understand the value of things and so you treat them better. Some people hate going to work. So some people, they hate going to work, but they continue doing it even though it doesn't serve them. They just get a paycheck. And they value that paycheck more than they value their time. People value their paycheck more than they value their, their husbands, their wives, their kids, their family, their way of life. They value the job they hate more than the dreams they love, which is why they pursue the job they hate more than the dreams they love. I've come across people who are very good at acting, very charismatic people, but they won't go through the pain of, of the auditions and being turned down and, and traveling and doing the auditions and taking the risk of being homeless and all of that kind of stuff because the value is, is, is misplaced. Because we're more like batteries rather than just empty mechanical parts, right? Like for instance, you can either be the pitcher or the baseball. But when you see yourself as the baseball rather than the pitcher, you don't operate efficiently. You don't realize your own power. You just think you're this thing that other things use as leverage rather than you using the things, the other things as leverage. So why do, why do you think that people find more comfort in being used. And sometimes the word used has a negative connotation, but why do you think it is that people take comfort in being used rather than finding leverage and using others or other things in an ethical way? It's just fear, fear walking away and stepping into the unknown. If all you were taught to do was be used and undervalued, you become so used to being used and undervalued, you don't know what else there is. So if you're not being used and undervalued, then what are you doing? You've never experienced anything else and the unknown is terrifying. You know what it's like to live in your current house with the roof over your head, but you don't know what it's like to be homeless, and you also don't want to find out. It's fear. It's just a fear to walk away. You, we try to hold on to everything. We want to hold on to the expensive stuff. We want to hold on to the bills that we struggle with, that in turn affect our family, that in turn hurt our marriage, that in turn hurt our kids. Right? And then in order to hold on to those bills and hold on to those expensive things, we have to hold on to this job we can't stand, which in turn also uh, hurts our family, hurts our, our husband, our wife, our kids. Right? And then that job that you're holding on to is underpaying you, so you're still struggling with these bills that are also hurting you. To hold on to these expensive things that you don't need but continue to pay for, right? So when you take a look around and you see everyone around you, everyone has two hands with a fist full of sand. And over time, that sand seeps through the cracks in your fingers. And so you're standing here like this. And it comes a point in time where in order to receive something better, you have to open up your hand and let go, right? In order to get something else. 
And it's it's people think that they have to go through a whole bunch of stuff in order to get another opportunity. And the fact is, is that you create your own opportunities. Right? No one gives you anything. You 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 will your own opportunities towards you if you let them. Right? It's kind of like uh I ended up being a fitness coach for the, for the last 10 years because all I thought about was the gym and training, right? Leading those people to that alternate reality where you don't have to be weak and unhealthy and fat. You can get in the gym and be strong and lean and healthy. That's, the, that's a form of that alternate reality. You teach people how to cross over, right? And the more influence, the more you develop yourself, the more influence you have, and the more people you can bring over to that reality, right? But you will it to yourself. And people think, oh, well, bad things happen, and bad things do happen, but very good things also happen. It just depends on what you focus on. Do you focus on what you don't have or what you do have? Do you focus on the opportunity, the good opportunities that you can potentially have? Or do you focus on what you can lose? Because when you're driving, right, it's like, are you looking back from where you came or are you looking to where you're going? Because chances are, if you're driving forward but looking backwards, chances are you're going to get into an accident crash and then it's going to be a terrible wreck. Right? And that, there's just no good that comes out of that. But if you look forward while you're driving, chances are you're going to avoid that crash. And so again, it's where your focus is, right? And your, your, your focus goes where your energy flows, right? So it's all just a matter of your focus, and that's really what it is. And a lot of people think that's complete and total bullshit. And those people who think that's complete and total bullshit, chances are they're the ones with both the hands full of sand that they're losing their grip on. You're trying to hold all these things. And the, and the thing is, is that we can't hold on to everything. You can't eat and not shit, right? You gotta let something go. Right? In, order for, in order for cells to repair and grow in the body, other cells have to die and be shed off of the body. So what would your character in the book say to someone who is to go with you and your, your tribe. Like if you could think of like, of one line that would just like, completely let go of all of the doubt, all of the what ifs, all of the I can't, I shouldn't, the I don't knows. Whatever isn't growing is dying. What are you doing? Are you growing or are you dying? If you're subscribing to your fear of dying but you're not growing, you're causing your own death. So will you grow or will you die? <laughs>